A British man who abused children in Asia whilst posing as a charity worker gets multiple life terms. His youngest victim was six months old. This is the literal face of evil. Richard Huckle, a man believed to have assaulted more than 200 children, including infants, in East Asia from 2006 to 2014. And when you think it could not be worse, he documented his heinous acts and boasted about them online. The extent of his crimes is truly appalling. Curious to know how he was eventually incarcerated? Stick with us as we reveal the gruesome end that awaited him. You said you're not really pro at anything except being a paedophile. What do you mean by that? Born on May 14th, 1986, in Ashford, Kent, UK, Huckle had no reported history of childhood abuse or neglect. We point this out because such trauma is often presented as an excuse for the most heinous crimes. Huckle was rather described as a reserved and solitary individual by those who knew him. Sadly, evil often hides beneath the most harmless looking faces. He never seemed off or anything like that. He's, he just seemed like, like a normal person, as if just very, very quiet. Um, didn't really talk about um, that home and things like that. So how does this unassuming and reserved individual turn to a degrading life of crime? At 16, Huckle embarked on a month-long trip to visit a school in Africa. Upon returning to the UK, he was inspired and decided to take a gap year in East Asia. This gap year between 2005 and 2006 marked the beginning of his documented offenses. Huckle was 19 or 20 years old at this time. While in East Asia, he volunteered at orphanages and schools, but underneath all of that good work was a sinister secret. In March 2006, it would later be discovered that Huckle abducted and assaulted two sisters aged four and six in Cambodia. He would later relocate to Malaysia and assault a five-year-old girl repeatedly for seven years until she turned 12. During his interval trips back to the UK, Huckle acquired more qualifications just so he could easily gain access to children. Most notable of all was a certificate for teaching English as a second language, and that was not the only ace up his sleeve. By presenting himself as a freelance photographer, he used this guise to infiltrate orphanages, schools, and impoverished communities, all under the pretense of raising awareness for children's plights and supporting the organizations that aided them. He was welcomed immediately. Someone like, like you said, Richard Huckle, who is an Englishman, he's intelligent, he's coming to do us a favor, is what the community may be thinking. Um, who are we that someone like him should come to us Therefore, we have to go out of our way to make him comfortable. And when children start saying things, if, if indeed they did, we don't even know if they raised an alarm, but if they did, then, um, you know, uh, very likely they would not have been believed over him. In 2011, Huckle made a permanent move to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This provided him with the opportunity to fully engage in his pedophilic activities. During this time, he portrayed himself as a Christian missionary who was dedicated to helping those in need. Right after he gained the trust of his victims and their guardians, he would strike, often manipulating situations to isolate them and have them to himself alone. You, you met Richard Huckle. Yes, I met him through I treated the children. I walked with the, the, under the mother concern. And what was he like? He said it's like salt. He's a long tail. Yeah. Fortunately, Huckle meticulously documented his abuses in a disturbing ledger. He assigned himself points based on the victim's ages and the severity of the assaults. Investigators would later use this ledger to estimate the extent of his crimes. According to the numbers, he victimized between 191 and over 200 children between 2006 and 2014. Sadly, his victims ranged from infants to 12-year-olds. In addition to engaging in acts of sexual violence, Huckle also captured footage of himself degrading his victims. Authorities recovered approximately 20,000 images and videos of Huckle's abuses from his electronic devices, but this was likely only a fraction of the total content. He refused to give the authorities access to the encrypted files, wondering why he had such photos. Huckle made sure to share images and videos of his crimes online. All of this was done using the encrypted dark web network, dubbed the Love Zone. On the network, Huckle boasted how it was much easier to manipulate impoverished children than those from middle-class Western families. 
He expressed his fondness for South Asia, as it was the perfect hideaway for his crimes. He boasted of a particular family with whom he had developed close relationships over six years. Their investigation initially focused on an Australian care worker named Shannon McCool. He was suspected of being a significant operator on the Love Zone platform. At the time of his arrest, Shannon was still logged into the network. The authorities quickly assumed his identity and infiltrated the platform. This operation led to the exposure of around 1,000 pedophiles from all over the world. When they caught on to Richard Huckle and his crimes, they forwarded this intelligence to various law enforcement agencies, including the British National Crime Agency. Instantly analyzed minute detail of what he was saying and the photographs he was taking. And as a result of that, we found that the location of the abuse was happening in Malaysia. Richard Huckle groomed those children and he groomed them to a point that he was certain that no matter what he did to them, they would not tell their parents of the abuse that they were suffering from him. The Day of Reckoning was December 19th, 2014. Huckle returned to London Gatwick Airport from Malaysia with plans to spend Christmas with his family. However, the officers from the National Crime Agency arrested him. Huckle was questioned extensively, but he remained uncooperative for most of it. Following his arrest, Huckle was released on bail to reside at his parents' home. In the meantime, his laptop was seized to enable further analysis. By the following day, his parents would beg the authorities to keep him locked up. The second he confessed his crimes to them in a drunken rage, the investigation into Richard Huckle was comprehensive. The officers meticulously reviewed and categorized the contents of his computer. However, due to Huckle's refusal to provide encryption details, they were unable to fully uncover the extent of his heinous crimes. Based on documented evidence, Huckle was eventually charged with offenses related to 29 children. Still, the prosecutors believed the actual number of victims exceeded 200. In January 2016, Huckle initially pleaded not guilty, but later expressed willingness to plead guilty if allowed to view the material on his computer. We believe that trying to view his evil acts one last time was the lowest Huckle could possibly have gone. We could, however, not determine if this infuriating request was granted. Ultimately, Huckle admitted to 71 offenses, including multiple counts of child rape, sexual assault, possession and distribution of child pornography, and creation of illicit content. Huckle's sentencing took place from June 1st to June 3rd, 2016, at the Old Bailey in London. The court dedicated nearly two days to reviewing the extensive list of offenses. By the time it was done, Richard Huckle was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 23 years before he could be eligible for parole. One of the worst paedophiles ever seen by the British courts has been given 22 life sentences. 30-year-old Richard Huckle was handed a minimum term of 25 years for 71 offences that he's admitted. He's suspected of abusing up to 200 children in Malaysia. As you can imagine, many people criticised the sentence as too lenient. In the eyes of the public, Huckle was a monster who did not deserve a life sentence with the possibility of parole. Well, those who had called for Huckle to spend the rest of his life behind bars would actually get their wish. In October of 2019, Richard Huckle was incarcerated at HM Prison Full Sutton. Now, this is a Category A prison that is renowned for housing only the worst criminals. One prisoner was 30-year-old Paul Fitzgerald. He is a diagnosed psychopath who harbored fantasies of raping, killing, and eating people. Unfortunately for Huckle, he was on the same prison wing as Fitzgerald. On the 13th of October 2019, Huckle was in his cell when Fitzgerald walked in. He had a makeshift knife on him, and he attacked Huckle the second he shut the door. He was found dead in his cell yesterday at Full Sutton Prison near York. It's understood he was attacked with what was described as a makeshift knife. Fitzgerald first gagged Huckle. Next, he bound his hands and feet together. The attack was reportedly an hour and 15 minutes long. In that time, Huckle had his head smashed into the floor about seven times. His anus was also penetrated with the handle of a kitchen spoon. He was stabbed in the neck and lastly, endured the pain of the homemade knife being forced up his nose with so much force that the blade penetrated into his brain. By the time prison officers arrived at Huckle's cell, 
they were met with a gruesome scene. Fitzgerald took pride in his work, stating that he had not done up to half of what he intended. If he had enough time, he planned on cooking and eating different parts of Huckle's body. Fitzgerald described his actions as poetic justice. In his twisted mind, he had delivered what he believed was the ultimate punishment to Huckle for his crimes. Fitzgerald didn't show any remorse and was eventually sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 34 years before he's eligible for parole.